today we'll be looking at how to determine or calculate the empirical formula of an organic compound through combustion. That means if we have a sample of organic compound and we want to determine the empirical and molecular formula of the compound, what do we do? We carry out combustion of the compound. We allow the compound to burn. During the process of burning, we ensure that all the carbon four oxide that will come out during the combustion are well collected. None will be allowed to escape. And also, the water molecules will not be allowed to escape. The quantity of carbon four oxide that will be generated during the combustion will be gathered and measured. The mass of it will be measured. And the mass of the water that will come out during the combustion will also be gathered. Remember that combustion of most organic compounds produce carbon four oxide and water. That is CO2 and water. Now, let's see how to determine empirical formula through combustion. Let's start with this question that says, a sample of an organic compound weighing 9.67 milligram produced 26.53 milligrams of CO2 and 21.56 milligrams of water. The question now says, calculate the percentage composition of carbon and hydrogen present in the sample. Now, let's solve this problem. Now, these are the values given to us in the question. The mass, the total mass of the compound, that is the sample that was burnt, the mass of it that was burnt is 9.67 milligrams. That is the mass of the organic compound that was burnt. Now, during the combustion, carbon dioxide and water were produced. And the mass of carbon dioxide, that is CO2, produced during the process of the combustion is 26.53 milligrams. Why the mass of H2O, that is water, produced in the process is 21.56 milligrams. Now, what we need to do is simple. Since it is an organic substance, we are already aware that carbon will be present in the compound, hydrogen will also be present. But we are not yet sure if oxygen will be there. When we find the mass of carbon present in the compound, and we find the mass of hydrogen present in the compound, we are going to add the mass of the carbon to the mass of the hydrogen. Add the two of them. If the two of them is equal, or if they are equal to the total mass of the organic compound, it simply means that oxygen will not be present. But if we add our carbon and the hydrogen, and the mass is not up to the total mass, then we will use oxygen to make it up. So how do we find the mass of carbon present in that sample? It was not given to us. What was given to us is mass of CO2 that was produced. Now, to find the mass of carbon present, we are going to find it from the mass of CO2 because the carbon is buried inside the CO2. To find the mass of hydrogen present, we are going to find it from the mass of water given to us because hydrogen is buried inside the water. Remember, what we have to find is mass of carbon and mass of hydrogen. Remember, if I have my carbon and I have my hydrogen, if I find the mass of carbon present, I'll put it here and divide by the atomic mass of carbon, 12. If I find the mass of hydrogen present in the sample, I'll put it here and divide by atomic mass of hydrogen, which is 1. So what I need to do 
is to find the mass of carbon there and the mass of hydrogen. As soon as I find that, I'm good to go. This one is for empirical formula, if I'm looking for empirical formula. But what I am asked to find in this question is the percentage composition, which means tell us the percentage of each of the elements present in the compound. Let us first of all find the mass of carbon and the mass of hydrogen present. Those are the two principal elements that are always present in organic compounds. Now, I'm going to find my mass of carbon from CO2. How do I do that? The mass of CO2 present or that was produced during the process is 26.53 milligrams, which means inside 26.53 milligrams of CO2, there is a certain quantity of carbon present. So that quantity of carbon present inside this is what we need to find. And how do we find it? Finding mass of C present, we will start with the molar mass of CO2. Now, the molar mass of CO2 is mass of carbon plus mass of oxygen plus mass of oxygen. Remember, CO2, CO2. And the molar mass is, carbon is 12, Oxygen is 16, and other oxygen is 16. Remember, there are two oxygens there. So total molar mass, total mass is 44 grams per mole. Now, the molar mass of CO2 is 44. Now, you ask yourself, inside 44 grams of CO2, what did carbon contribute inside this 44? Every 44 grams of CO2 contains 12 grams of carbon. So I'm going to say that 44 grams of CO2 contains 12 grams of carbon. Therefore, Twenty-six point five three. That is this. If forty-four grams of CO two contains twelve grams of carbon, therefore this quantity of CO two, which is twenty-six point five three milligrams of CO two, will contain what I do not know. I can call it X grams of carbon. You don't need to bother yourself about units. Don't do any unit conversion. The units will take care of themselves as you solve. Now, how do I find my X? This X represents the quantity of carbon contained in 26.53 milligram of CO2. And that is the quantity of carbon we are looking for. So if I say 44 divided by 26.53 is equal to 12 divided by X. So making X subject of formula this over this is equal to this over this. Therefore, x alone will be equal to, by cross multiplication, x will be 12 times this, 12 multiplied by 26.53, that is this, divided by the coefficient of x, which is 44. And that will give us 7.2. 4 milligrams of carbon. This is the quantity of carbon present in 26.53 milligrams of carbon for oxide. Can see what I did? I want to find the quantity of carbon present inside this quantity of CO2. I started from the molar mass of CO2. Since molar mass of CO2 is 44, you ask yourself, Inside this 44, which is the molar mass of CO2, how many did carbon contribute? Carbon contributed only 12. Remember, carbon has atomic mass of 12. So that means that every 44 grams of CO2 contains 12 grams of carbon. Therefore, 
26.53 milligrams of CO2 will contain X. You make X a little formula that will give us 7.24 milligrams of carbon. So that is the mass of carbon present. Now let us find the mass of hydrogen present. Finding the mass of hydrogen, we are going to do a similar thing we did for carbon. We are going to find the hydrogen from the water. This is the mass of water produced during the combustion. So inside this mass of water, we are going to fish out the mass of hydrogen present here. We'll start from the molar mass of water. The molar mass of water, as you know, is 18 grams. Molar mass of water is equal to hydrogen plus hydrogen plus oxygen. Why am I writing hydrogen two times? Because it's H2, which is one atomic mass of hydrogen plus another one then plus oxygen, which is 16, and that will give us 18 grams. Now, every one mole of water has a mass of 18 grams. Ask yourself this question. Inside 18 grams of water, how much or how many did hydrogen contribute to this 18? Hydrogen is H2 there, which means hydrogen contributed this one and this one, total of two. So every 18 grams of water contains 2 grams of hydrogen. What do I say? I will say 18 grams of water contains 2 grams of hydrogen because hydrogen is 1 plus 1, which is 2. Therefore, 21.56 21.56 milligrams of water will contain how many? We do not know, we can call it X. Now, if you say 18 divided by 21.56 is equal to two divided by X. If you make X a of formula to give you this times this, two multiplied by 21.56 divided by the coefficient of X, which is 18. And that will give us two points three, nine, six milligrams of H. This is the mass of hydrogen contained in 21.56 milligrams of water. Now we have gotten the mass of carbon present in the sample. We have also gotten the mass of hydrogen present in the sample. The next thing we will do is to add the mass of carbon and hydrogens we got. We we'll add them together to check if it will be equal to the total mass of the compound. If the sum of the two gives us the total mass, simply means that oxygen will not be present. But if we add the two and it is not up to the total mass, then we will use oxygen to make up. Now let's add the two masses together. Now, this is the mass of carbon present, which we have already found, and this is the mass of hydrogen present. Both are in milligrams. Now, we are going to add the two. If we do that, my carbon plus my hydrogen will give me 7.24 plus 2.396, and that will give us 9.64 milligrams. Remember, why we are having four heads? Because we took only two decimal places here. If I collect all the decimal numbers, it will give me exactly the same value. So, the sum of C and H is equal to the total mass. They are approximately equal. In that case, oxygen will no longer be present. Now we can move ahead and solve the problem. Let us now answer the question. Question there says, what is the percentage of carbon and hydrogen present in the compound? Now we have the total mass as this, and we have the mass of carbon as this, while we have the mass of hydrogen as this. 
the percentage of carbon will be equal to mass of carbon, which is 7.24, divided by the total mass, which is 9.67, then multiplied by 100 over 1. That is how to get the percentage of carbon. Why the percentage of hydrogen will be equal to the mass of hydrogen, which is 2.396, divided by the total mass of the compound, which is 9.67, multiplied by 100 all over 1. If you punch your calculator, you are going to have 74.9%. Why hydrogen is 24.8%? If I am asked to find the empirical formula of this compound, I will say carbon and hydrogen. If I like, I can use the percentages. Or if I don't want to use percentages, I can use the masses to give me the same answer. Either I use 7.24 for carbon and 2.396 for hydrogen. For carbon, I'll divide by 12. For hydrogen, I'll divide by 1. I believe you know how to tackle empirical formula. Divide by atomic masses. After that, you divide by the smallest number. After which you can get your answer. But if you don't want to use the masses, you can use the percentages. Percentage of carbon is 74.9, while hydrogen is 24.8. Divide by 12, divide by 1. Whether you use the percentages or you use the masses for the empirical formula, you will still get the same answer. Do not forget to please like this video, share with your friends, and drop your comments. Thank you for watching.